Welcome to the Cafe 80s, where it's always morning in America, even in the afternoon and noon. sandwiches. You want to trade, Lindsay? Great. What do you have? An egg salad sandwich. <laughs> Who told you he loved it? Twiggly and egg salad. They belong together like Evie and Derek. <laughs> Derek, please, I'm trying to keep down my lunch. I don't know. Your Romeo and Juliet recitation with him looked pretty hot today. Come on, you guys. If I was on a balcony and Derek was climbing up, I'd jump off. I think he's real weird. Mm -hmm. Well, he may be weird, but he's cute weird. You think everybody's cute. Just the boys. <laughs> you think I'm cute, Lindsay? Most boys. <laughs> Go to the quick. <laughs> but I like Derek. He's an entomologist. He collects bugs. <sighs> like I said, weird. <laughs> he's a lot different when the day he got here. Remember the first time we saw him? I must say, Derek, I'm very impressed. Yeah. Your, your scores on the admission tests are extremely high. Yeah. So you're also a man of few words. Yeah. <laughs> so you run this place? Yeah. Aren't you kind of young to be doing that? <laughs> yeah. You can't be more than 45. <laughs> yeah? Uh, I see your, your father travels around a lot. Yeah, business. Every time he takes off, he drops me at a new school. This time, you're the babysitter. What about your mother? She remarried some jerk in Texas. Well, it's a shame your father has to travel so much. Hey, it's not his fault he has to travel. Well, I didn't say it was. But I can sympathize with you. My husband is away a lot, and I know how hard it is on my daughter. Well, he's a great father. You won't get any complaints out of me. Everybody, everybody, this is this is Derek Rogers. Uh, why don't you all get acquainted and show him around the class until the teacher gets here? See you later. <laughs> that was a pretty dumb thing to do. Oh, I specialize in dumb. I'm Lindsay. Nice to meet you. And I'm Quigley. Hey, you want to go solve some equations? So, what's your name, Blondie? It isn't Blondie. It's Evie. Where are you from? All around. I always wanted to go there. <laughs> Lindsay, don't be so drooly. How would you like to go someplace with me? Sure. Where? Down to the beach. We can go look for some dead fish. <laughs> He wasn't kidding, you know. He showed me a couple fish eyes the next day. Those were marbles. Well, then that's the first marble I've ever seen that winked at me. Quickly, <laughs> stop it. So what happened after that, Evie? A disastrous dinner. And during dessert, gross city. So, uh, you're 13, huh, Derek? <laughs> 
Well, just think, in five more years, you'll be able to vote for me. <laughs> be still, my heart. Yeah, the, uh, the mayor was Mosquito Man on TV. Did you know that, Derek? Huh? <laughs> He's probably too young. Well, uh, <clears throat> yeah, well, it came on at uh, Wednesday night at 7.30. It came in close to my hands like this and went, <laughs> Mosquito Man! <laughs> Remember? I saw that show on reruns. That costume was all wrong. You were dressed like a Culex Pipins, which is not part of the Dipterous insects of the family Culicidae, the females of which suck the blood of animals and man. Kind of like the IRS with wings. <laughs> Here are some yummy, gooey cream puffs. Vino? Oh, no, thank you. I don't think I'm very hungry. <clears throat> so, did Derek tell you he was interested in entomology? <laughs> we found out the hard way. Is that what you want to do when you grow up, Derek? Yeah. I like to bug people. <laughs> There's a better chance of me running the Bates Motel. Well, anyway, Donna, that was, certainly was a delicious dinner you made tonight. Oh, <laughs> you seem to enjoy it yeah. a lot. <laughs> well, Derek, my motto is never put off eating until tomorrow, that which you can wolf down today. <laughs> Bino. <laughs> Bino. You know, I never heard the name Bino before. Uh, maybe Derek is interested in its origin. Not really. Well, actually, uh, the doctor named me. <laughs> yeah, when he first saw me born, he said, my goodness, I hope there'll be no more like him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have this much fun every night, or did I just get lucky? Derek, I thought you might like to join some of the clubs at school. I don't like clubs. And they wouldn't like you either, Evie. Please, honey, he's our guest. I'm sorry, Mom, but he's hopeless. Oh, boo-hoo, boo-hoo. What's a young fella to do? <laughs> That's good. Maybe you should join a poetry club. Listen, I'm not joining any dumb clubs with a lot of dumb people. I'm an independent. I'm self-reliant. I don't need anybody. Derek, everybody needs somebody. We all just get off my back. We're just trying to be friendly. Why? Why? Yeah, why? Yeah, yeah, why? why? <laughs> because you're, you're a stranger here, and we wanted to reach out and, and make you feel more at home. I don't. I'll second that. Motion carried. <laughs> hey, look, I didn't even want to come here in the first place. Then why don't you just leave? Eve, please. Oh, you don't like it? I'm history. If I wanted to be overcome with family life, I'd watch Cosby. <laughs> It's too bad I'm not still Mosquito Man. I like to bite him, right between the eyes. That is a very troubled young man. Didn't I tell you he'd have an awful time if you invited him for dinner? Yes, Eve, you did. And he needs a lot of help, which is why I want you to invite him again. Why? why? Your mother wants you to invite Derek back? Uh-huh. I told you she loves rescue cases. She said his behavior was a cry for help. Why do parents hear everybody else's cry for help except their own kids? Because then we wouldn't have anything to complain about. <laughs> but I mean, they should just stick to what they do best, providing. <laughs> so what happened after that, Evie? Did she invite him? Worse, she said I had to invite him. Mm. Evie, that is grossly unright. I know, but until I'm 16, I have to do what she says. In this state, it's 18. Then you can fly the coop unless, of course, you need money for college. <laughs> anyway, I did it. But not before I had another surprise, thanks to my mom. Oh, no. Would you please disappear? I'm supposed to rehearse Romeo and Juliet for English. So am I. You're my Romeo? Oh, I left my tights at home. Sorry to disappoint you. <laughs> I can't do it. Juliet was in love with Romeo. I'm not that good of an actress. Hey, no sweat off my nose. Just tell your mother to get me another partner. My mother arranged this? Parents! No, 
No wonder Juliet's life was such a bummer. <laughs> okay, let's rehearse. You'll do it? Golly gosh, this could be the highlight of my short life. <laughs> oh, I wish I could say the same. But before we start, do you want to come over for dinner tonight? What is this, be nice to the freak week? It's my mom's idea. See, she has this delusion that underneath your dumb exterior, you're only fractionally dumb. <laughs> do you want me to come to dinner? Does a tongue like to be ripped out? Good, then I'll be there. Be there at 8. We're eating at 7. Well, you want to rehearse or not? I can't wait. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and blondie is the sun. Eraser head, eraser head. Wherefore art thy eraser head? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Eraserhead? That is so cool. What happened at the dinner? Did Derek come? Uh-huh. But with a little surprise. See, if my mom was so big on me helping rejects like Derek, I figured she should do the same. That day, just before we left for home. Yo, anybody home? <gasps> just me. Oh, can I help you? Thanks. Can I help you? Oh, I can think of a lot of things you could help me with. <laughs> I'm sure you manage just fine by yourself. Yeah, but I hate to be by myself. You want to have dinner sometime? Sorry, I don't do dinner. You don't eat? Not with you. I'm married. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo, what's a fella to do? That cry sounds familiar. Who are you? My name is Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> <laughs> you are too cute for real life. I knew you'd get to like me. <laughs> but I'm afraid that your fairy tale is in for a tragic ending, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Rogers. I'm just trying to make a wonderful day in the neighborhood. <laughs> you can do that by moving out. <laughs> hey. We could make beautiful music together. Rogers? Are you Derek Rogers' father? In the flesh. I'm in town for the day, so I thought I'd stop by and say hello to my kid. Mm. Well, now it's all making sense. Like father, like son. You noticed, huh? Mm. That's how I taught him to be. Self-reliant, independent. Oh, he's that all right. <laughs> but he could use a little help in the area of socialization. Socialization? Well, for starters, common courtesy. Derek has none. Common courtesy? Well, that's what I pay the school to do. Maybe this one can't handle the job. Maybe no school should have to handle the job of an absentee father. Where do you get off talking to me like that? Look, I'm just trying to help Derek. Mr. Rogers, I think that we no, should No, no, I've seen your type before. You just like to meddle. Well, not in my life or my kids. No wonder Derek has trouble relating to others. Mm. His father is a stubborn, stone-headed... Neanderthal. Hey, watch it. What's your name? Because I want to write a letter about this. Sleeping Beauty. And send it to the Magic Castle. Hi. Hi. What was that all about? I don't think that lady likes me. Do you go to school here? Uh-huh. Do you know my son, Derek Rogers? I sure do. He's a great kid, isn't he? He thinks so. Hey, Dad! Oh, hey! How's it going? Great! How long are you gonna be in town? Oh, uh, I gotta leave in the morning. Oh, we'll make the most of it, won't we, big guy, huh? What do you want to do tonight? Uh, he's coming to dinner at my house tonight. Forget it, Blondie. I'm going out with my dad. Great! Uh, hey, Derek, if you made other plans... No way! Uh... I'd rather be with you! <laughs> I have a great idea. Why don't you bring your father? I'm sure my mom would love to get to know him. Kiwi, you invited Derek's father, even though you knew your mother had a fight with him? Yeah, sneaky, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that qualifies you for the Teenage Hall of Fame. Wanted to see how she felt being nice to somebody she didn't like. You know, it's rare that a kid has a chance to turn the tables on his own parent. 
Evie, I commend you. Thanks. I'm pretty proud of it myself. Anyway, that night, I didn't tell my mom about inviting him until the perfect moment. That must be Derek. Now, Evie, remember, I want you to be nice to him. Oh, I will. You're right. I shouldn't judge people by their fourth or fifth impression. <laughs> Eve, I'm proud of you. You've learned a very important lesson. Everyone deserves another chance. I knew you'd feel that way. I do. And you'll see that I'm right. You know, this dinner tonight could be a real turning point for Derek. man doing here? I invited him. He's here for dinner and a second chance. You invited him? Oh, I get it. A little object lesson for old mom, huh? Well, fine. Fine. I can practice what I preach as well as the next one. You watch. We'll be so sweet to him, he will get a cavity. So glad you could drop by. If I knew it was you, I would have worn my bulletproof vest. And I'm sure you make a nice target in it. <laughs> Come in. Here. Thanks. <laughs> you two know each other? Hmm. Mm. We had a lovely chat this afternoon. Didn't we, Mr. Rogers? Oh, yes. Yeah. Special. Very special. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> so, what do you teach at the school? Mrs. Garland doesn't teach anymore, Dad. She runs the school. Her? Get out of here. Get out of here? <laughs> what a lovely turn of phrase. I guess that saying is true. Those that can do, those that can't run a school. Excuse me? No, no offense. It happens all the time. It's the Peter principle. Upward failure. <laughs> I will have you know that I am damn good at what I do. And just because I am the principal, I am no Peter. Mom? <laughs> Thing. Where do you come off saying... <laughs> Anything about me. You breeze in here and... <laughs> Eve, did I give you permission to stop time? I didn't want you getting in an argument with Mr. Rogers. Well, that's my decision to make, not yours. Now, unfreeze him. I'm not finished with this bozo. What about extending yourself and giving people a second chance? A second chance? To do what? To, to, to be arrogant and, and cantankerous and bullheaded? Uh-huh. That's what Derek's been doing to all of us all week. And you keep making me try to like him. Eve, it's completely different. I just wanted you to m make Derek feel wanted. You can't force something like that. He may be OK under all that weirdness, but I don't want to be his friend. <laughs> Eve, you're right. I shouldn't force you to like somebody should come naturally. I'm sorry. I just want to be able to choose my own friends, OK? OK. I just wish we could do something for Derek. You just said it. It has to come naturally, right? Right. Now, let's get this evening over with. Battle stations. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, what do you do for a living? He's an import-export. He travels all over. I could open my own office somewhere, but uh, why stifle myself? I like the open road. What about Derek? What about him? He's a great kid. No, I think so. Wouldn't you like to see more of him? Now, don't start that again. I would, Dad. Would what? I'd like you to be around more. You would? Eve, let's get dinner. Hey, what's the problem? I take care of you, give you everything you need. Don't I send you dead bugs from all over the world? Yeah, but I'd rather have you around. Come on, where's that rugged individual I'm raising? Dad, I don't 
don't know if I'm ready to be that rugged yet. It's kind of lonely. Hey, big guy, you never told me anything about all this. You never asked me. Wow, Derek, this is knocking me for a loop. I thought I was doing OK. I, I just want to have a father I can come home to in my own room. I've never had my own room. We're always moving around. You know, Derek, this is good. This is good you're telling me all this. You know, maybe that lady isn't so dumb after all. <laughs> It happens all the time. It's just a failure to communicate. Poor Derek. Never had anybody. Well, I knew he was a deep sensitive soul all along. <laughs> hey, you guys, you don't have to go overboard about him. Still acts weird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think his father's gonna relocate someplace permanently. I hope it's here. <laughs> Hi, Derek. I saw a roach today. <laughs> hey, you wanna sit down? No, nah, I'm taking Lindsay to see my spider collection. You ready to go? Uh-huh. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye. Bye. See you, Derek. Oh, Evie. You make a mean Juliet. Thanks, Romeo. Is that a compliment? I don't know. I'm kind of new at this. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> weird. Just weird. <laughs> More to the right? More? More? More perfect. Okay. Help me spread these newspapers and magazines around. Mom, this will never work. Oh, yes, it will. The messier the house is, the less time Grandma will have to ask about where your father is. What are you going to tell her this time? Well, the same as usual. Gosh, Mom, you just missed him. He's gone undercover for the CIA in Zaire for the next 10 months. You used Zaire last time. I did? I thought it was Zimbabwe. Oh, well, I guess I'll have to start at the beginning of the alphabet. OK, you got it. Beautiful, perfect. Just the way I planned it. Oh, beautiful. OK, now we're talking. Look at the town. Thanks for the help, boys. Uh, don't munch on it. Hey, Donna, how can you let your mother sleep in this thing? It's very uncomfortable. Boys, I told you you're supposed to open it up first. Ah, but then how could we have gotten it through the door? Uh, thank you, Buzz. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. Have muscles? We'll travel. <laughs> well, I better get going. Bye, Evie. Well, I'll walk you to the corner. You never know when a mugger might come along. Or a cute cheerleader. <laughs> ah, young love. In my country, we celebrate the surge of romance with the kissy marimba. What is the kissy marimba? It's the dance of love. It's a cross between the tango and the hokey pokey. <laughs> Allow me to demonstrate. Well, why not? My insurance is all paid up. Now, these steps symbolize the first meeting of the young lovers. And these steps symbolize their declaration of love. 
Whereas these steps symbolize running away from the girl's father and his machete of marriage. And now, the most important steps of all. What are you doing with my daughter? Swimming in the purple fashion pit of love. Hi, Mom. I can't explain about Buzz. There is nothing to explain. I know what I saw. Mom, he was teaching me a, a silly dance step. It was all perfectly innocent. There is nothing innocent about the kissy marimba. You, I am not surprised. It all fits. What all fits? Oh, Donna, come on. Come off it. Your marriage is a bust. How can you say that? I have a wonderful marriage. How can you say your marriage is wonderful when you have hardly seen your spouse in 13 years? Sounds like an ideal marriage to me. <laughs> and while we're on the subject, how is it that you're not married as yet? Oh, Mom, please, let's just limit the attack to Donna's life for now. Thank you, Bino. <laughs> You don't need to spare me the pain. Admit it. Your marriage is over. Mother, my marriage is not over. Sometimes it's on hold, but it is not over. Darling, being dumped is nothing to be ashamed of. It happens all the time. Don't you remember when your father dumped me for that... Uh, that woman who collected tolls on the Jersey Turnpike? <laughs> Mom, Troy did not dump... You simply cannot trust men. Do you know, I heard on Oprah that 60% of the men cheat in America, the rest cheat in Europe. <laughs> Mom, Troy did not dump me. Oh, well, it's all my fault. <laughs> I've been a bad role model. I've failed as a wife, and now I've failed you as a mother. <laughs> Mom, you did not fail. You are a terrific mother, and, and my marriage is fine, honest. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> you know I hate to see you cry. Oh, I'm sorry, Bino, but I'm... I just feel awful. There's nothing to feel awful about. Yes, there is. Your husband has run out on you, and I find you in the arms of a strange man. I told you. He, he works for Bino. Oh, please stop it. I'm tired of these lies. Mom, I'm not lying. He's a friend of the family. Oh, I've never seen a friend act in such a friendly fashion before. Well, that's because Because he's... why? Well, because he... Why? Because why? he is my husband. <laughs> What did you say? What did I say? Uh, I, I, I said that that man inside is my husband. Oh. <laughs> Evie, did you just stop time or did I kill Grandma? <laughs> Mom, Buzz isn't really my father, is he? Oh, darling, if that were true, wouldn't I have ended my life long ago? <laughs> Then why did you tell Mom such a crazy story? I don't know. She was crying. She was upset. She thought it was all her fault. It just came out. Well, what are we going to do now? Well, the only thing we can do... Right. Leave her frozen, move to Canada. <laughs> no. I'm going to have to get Buzz to play along and pretend that he's my... husband. <laughs> Anybody have any Alka-Seltzer? Hey, here's a wacky suggestion, Donna. Why not tell Mom the truth for a change? You married an alien. Oh, no! Bingo! She didn't want me to marry outside of our neighborhood. How can I tell her I'm married outside of our species? Well, I have no part of this. I am out of here. As Sir Walter Scott once said, Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we fib to our mommies. <laughs> Damn! Okay, I know what I'm not on. I know. Yeah. Well, Evie? Time to bite the bullet. Are you with me? Do I have a choice? No. Then I'm with you. <laughs> I did not even hear you come in. You know, you two make an excellent pair of sneakers. <laughs> Buzz, I wonder if you'd like to help us play a... Little joke on my mother. All right, exclude me in. 
What shall it be? Huh? The cushion that makes the whoopee noise when you sit on it? <laughs> or possibly the exploding teeth? No, Buzz, I, I told my mother that you are my husband. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a whirl. But just in case, I'll keep the exploding teeth on standby. Uh, now, now, listen carefully, Buzz. My husband, Troy, is an agent for the CIA. He's a spy. A spy? Oh, I love it already. The name is Buzz. James Buzz. Uh, no, your name is Troy. And you've just had plastic surgery. You mean they cut out my plastic? Now, Buzz, I mean Troy. I'm going to go inside and bring my mother in here, and you're going to pretend that we're married, okay? Yes, dear. <laughs> Okay, honey. Unfreeze Grandma. Donna, I'm not stupid. That man out there isn't Troy. I know what Troy looks like. Mom, I wasn't supposed to tell you this, but Troy had to have plastic surgery for his next mission. Buzz is his code name, and, and, and that's why he's talking with that crazy accent. Really? Yes. He's undergone a complete identity change. That man is your husband? Yes, he's testing a new secret weapon. Well, I don't know why I'm wasting my time here. Well, Mom, it's the but truth. I should be out there hugging my son-in-law. Troy, darling. Bob's oh. baby. <laughs> Whee! Oh, Troy, I can't imagine why I didn't recognize you. I mean, aside from your new face and voice and hair, you you haven't changed a bit. And neither have you. Ah, oh, Troy, you're just saying that. Oh, no, you have the same old face. Uh, Dad still has the same old sense of humor, too. Oh. <laughs> oh, I am so happy to see my family finally together again. You must be glad to be home, Troy. Oh, absolutely, Bubs. <laughs> I mean, what more could a man want? A beautiful daughter, cute as a bug in a mayonnaise jar. Thanks, Dad. And a gorgeous wife, who is the envy of every man who meets her. My lips are like cheap wine. <laughs> Put a cork in that. <laughs> I am so glad to see your marriage is still intact. But you know, there is one thing that's still bothering me. What? Well, all the women in our family have always been married at home. And when you and Troy just ran off to Las Vegas, you broke the tradition. What? Mother, it, it was a lovely ceremony. You were there, don't you remember? It was a lovely chapel. A lovely. Our Lady of the Strip. <laughs> Now, before I leave, I want to give you and Troy a proper wedding ceremony with a minister right here in this house. You mean get married again? Mm -hmm. To Buzz? I mean, Dad. That's right. You're going to renew your vows. I don't think we could. Ah, uh, wonderful. And at the same time, I can renew my driver's license. <laughs> There's always Canada, eh? Hey, would you get serious? In two days, a minister is going to walk through that door and marry me to Buzz. Does anybody have any mail ox? I got it. We won't get a minister. What, get a rabbi? Oh, no, no, no. Listen, my friend, Frank Krasnick, he's an actor. All I have to do is invite him to come by here, pretend to be a minister, do a phony ceremony, and Mom will never be the wiser. <laughs> I'll make all the arrangements. Oh, I sure hope this works. Well, if it doesn't, we can always join the Mounties, eh? <laughs> No, this is her mother. Oh, that's too bad. Now, I'm sure that I can find another minister. Yes. Yes, thank you for calling. Thanks. 
<laughs> well, I'm ready to tidy up. <laughs> oh, you. What a kidder. I never realized you had such a puckish sense of humor. <laughs> oh, yes. The puck stops here. <laughs> well, I don't have time for jokes. The minister that Bino found can't make it, and I've just got to find another one. Oh, uh, gee, I wish I could help you. But I have to practice throwing the bouquet. You know, I found that if you tie it to a boomerang, you get to keep it. <laughs> oh, you got me again. You kidder. Absolutely. <laughs> camera. No! There will be no permanent record of today's events. Do you want Chris to see you in a picture with Daddy Buzz? <laughs> no, no, no cameras. Good afternoon. I'm Reverend Williams. Oh, nice name. Nice costume. Thank you. Uh, look, there. There's an extra 20 in this for you if you can make it look real. Oh, I can assure you there's nothing to worry about. I've been doing this for the past 10 years. Oh. Well, our minister has arrived. Yes. Mother, I'd like you to meet Reverend uh, Williams. Hello. I'm so glad you could make it. Oh, it's a pleasure. Oh. <laughs> Greetings, wedding people. I hope you don't mind the umbrella. I just came from my bridal shower. <laughs> <laughs> is he the entertainment? No, he is my beloved. Your beloved what? <laughs> Where'd you get that tuxedo? Oh, do you like it? This is the same outfit Guy Lombardo was buried in. <laughs> I was lucky to dig it up on such short notice. <laughs> I have brought for you the wedding corset. <laughs> Troy, it's, it's not a wedding corset, it's a wedding corsage. Oh, well, in that case, you better put it in some water. <laughs> and I have not forgotten you, my dear. A little something for the flower girl? <laughs> Donna, Donna. When Troy had that plastic surgery, did they nip and tuck his brain? <laughs> He's just a little nervous about the ceremony. Mm -hmm. uh, could we get started, please? Bless you. Oh, we can't start without Bino. Oh, I'm afraid we have to. You see, I have two other ceremonies to perform. Oh, but he's the best man. I don't doubt it. <laughs> Look at the competition. <laughs> All right, let's get on with this. Very well. We mustn't let anything ruin this. <laughs> Beautiful occasion. Places, everyone. Oh, allow me to turn on the music. You know, I picked this wedding march myself. Uh -huh. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here to join this woman and this person in, in holy matrimony. And remembering always that marriage is a sacrament not to be entered into lightly. Do you, Troy Garland, take this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold till death do you part? Absolutely. <laughs> And do you, Donna Joyce Garland, take this unusual man to be your lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold, till death do you part? I guess so. And may the Lord have mercy on your soul. Andy, who's the guy in the collar? Well, that's the actor you hired to be the minister. Uh-uh, that's not Frank. Frank is short, fat, and blonde. What? 
Uh, and so now, Mom, do you have any idea what happened to the minister I hired? Well, he couldn't make it, and so I like your this undying one love oh, affection. then he's a real minister? Yes, of By the course. powers vested in me in the state of California. Fingers, I do your stuff. Man and... Evie, what's going on? Mom, that guy's a real minister. <laughs> you mean I, I, I came within a heartbeat away of, of being Mrs. B -b 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 oh. Does anybody have any oxygen? Don't worry, Donna. We stopped it in time. But what are we going to tell Grandma? Well, I say... We finally tell her the truth. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's happened? It's so quiet. Uh, Mom, I have to tell you something about Troy. He's not moving or talking. <laughs> you know, it's an improvement. <laughs> Mom, this is not Troy. Uh, the reason you haven't seen him in all of these years is because he's on another... Well, he's an a... He's an alien from another planet. Oh, CIA alien, Donna, Donna. How do you dream up these excuses? No, I, it's true. T Troy is an alien from another planet, and, and, and Evie is, is half alien and ha inherited his power to stop time. See, look, nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, you mean you married a man from outer space? Yes, from the planet Antarius. Oh, and, and this man isn't your husband? No. Oh, oh, thank God. <laughs> well, Barbara, I'm so glad you don't mind having the son-in-law from outer space. Come on, I'm with it. I'm modern. I'm an 80s mom. <laughs> you know, we have a saying up here. Marry an earthling. They're cute, they're perky, and best of all, your mother-in-law is 12 million light years away. Dad! <laughs> Just kidding. You know, this could be a real breakthrough. Maybe I'll even tell my mother about you guys now. Grandma Troyetta doesn't even know about us? Hey, she's 1,368 years old. I can't just blurt out that her little boy married the creature from another planet. I love it when he calls me the creature. <laughs> Grandma is 1,368 years old. My, she's ever so much older than I. <laughs> Actually, in Earth years, that's 47. Oh, <laughs> she's just a few years older than I am. <laughs> Mom, uh, now that we've got Troy on the cube, is there anything you'd like Evie to ask him? There certainly is. What? Does he have a sister for Bino? <laughs> Grandma wants to know if you have a sister for Uncle Bino. Absolutely.
Yeah, I think it looks great. You wouldn't believe the screaming fit I had with my mom. I had to throw 11 tantrums before she let me get it. <laughs> tantrums don't work with my mom. Last time I had one, she asked me to do it again so she could videotape it. <laughs> Evie, are you all right? I don't know. I feel sick. This is Friday. Kids never get sick on Friday. Especially when there's a 50s saw cop at the end of it. Evie, should we get your mom? No. She worries if I sweat too much in gym class. Well, then okay, okay, I know exactly what to do. Okay, take your head and put it between your legs. Now grab your ankles and take a deep breath every two seconds. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Wait, wait, what's this for? Morning sickness. <laughs> I'm just feeling sick. I'm not pregnant. <laughs> What was that? No, it's nothing. Nothing? I just heard you say the P word. What's going on? She feels sick. Sick? You don't have a fever. I'll be okay. Eve? I'm okay. I just feel weak. I'm taking you home. Come on. I hope you feel better. Will you be at the dance this afternoon? No. Yes. <laughs> I brought you some tea, sweetheart. This will make you feel better. Mom, I'm all right, honest. No, you're not. You were queasy all the way home. Because of your driving. You drove through all the traffic signals. <gasps> Honey, those lights were yellow. Stop signs weren't. <laughs> all right. I get a little worried when you're sick. Eve, you're half alien. Who knows what kind of illness you could get? That must be the doctor. Oh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Drink your tea. We'll be right up. Hi, Mrs. G. We came to see Evie. Oh, what for? Shock therapy? We were on our way to the dance. Hey, uh, how's Evie? She can't to die, is she? No, she's, uh, just resting. Oh, Dr. Stockman, come in. Yes, yes. Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. I had to stop by Mrs. Whitman. She thinks she has gout. I thought she thought she had consumption. No, no, that was last week. That was after I cured her of the enteropathy she thought she had. Where did she ever come up with enteropathy? From the Donahue show. <laughs> oh, well, it looks like I made it just in time. These children look awful. Man, this is the real gone look of the 50s. We're tuned in, daddy old. I don't believe it. The screwed up kids of today trying to look like the screwed up kids of 30 years ago. <laughs> Where's Evie? Oh, she's upstairs. I made her go to bed. Uh, bed. Mother's medicine. Tell Evie I'll see her tomorrow, OK? Mm -hmm. Oh, Lindsay, uh, take some of this and call me in the morning. What is it? Makeup remover. <laughs> Is she all right? It's 85 degrees. It's incredibly low. What do you mean, low? Oh, relax. We start to worry when she gets below room temperature. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. What? Well, her pulse rate seems slow. Stop humming. How slow? That's one. <laughs> Two. Two and a half. Is she always like this? No, she's usually just fine. Three. I'm going to uh, give her a more thorough examination. That's cold. Yes, well, so are you. you take a deep breath. And again.
Evie, you must be freezing. No, I'm fine. Believe me, you are freezing. Now? Now. What do you want me to do that for? Eve, something very strange is going on with your face. I'm not turning into a lizard, am I? <laughs> ah! Blue dots, how gross! Mom, what is it? Don't panic. There's no need to panic. I'm in total control. <clears throat> I have been preparing myself for just such an emergency for years. I know exactly what to do. What? Call your father. <laughs> well, I mean, this, this must be a disease from his planet. No, Mom. What if it's entering acne? Evie, call him, quickly. Dad? Hi, Evie. How's it going? Dad, are you busy? No, I was just peeling a Farnham. What's that? It's kind of like an orange, only it's the size of a Winnebago. Evie, would you ask him about the blue dots? Dad, my face is all covered with blue dots. Sounds like you got the measles, honey. Antarian style. Measles? What do we do? Not much you can do, really. A little florinium will help. Florinium? Okay, ask, ask Daddy where, where to get it. Mom wants to know where we get it. I usually get mine from Doc. He runs a little pharmacy three planets down from Pluto. Wonderful. I'll call NASA, have them pick some up for us. Now, don't worry, Evie. Just get some rest. It'll be gone in 48 hours. I love you. I love you too, Donna. At least we know it's only measles, huh? We'll just have to uh, sit it out for the next 48 hours. What about Dr. Stockman? We can't let him see the blue dots. He'll get suspicious. What? He doesn't know I'm half alien. Eve. On this planet, blue dots on anything other than the end of a flashbulb is a big conversation piece. Then what do we do with him? Well, cover yourself up. Then you'll start time again, and I'll uh, usher him out. Wait, 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 wait. wanted to do that. <laughs> <clears throat> it's okay, Evie. Just cover up. It'll be okay. Oh, oh, oh. Boy, I gotta get this done fixed. Ooh. <laughs> well, Doctor, thank you so much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Yes, well, I, I haven't finished examining Evie yet. I, uh, where is she? She's under the covers. Shh, shh, shh. She fell asleep. Uh, well, we mustn't let her get overheated, must we? We... What in the name of the Mayo Clinic is this? You mean those birthmarks? Huh. This is amazing. You know, this tops the rash I saw one shaped like a jacuzzi. <laughs> rash. You know, she gets this all the time. It comes, it goes. <laughs> you know, in all my years of doctoring, I have only heard of one other case. Another case of blue dots? Yes. A couple of years ago, I read about it in the medical journal. Was a child, must have been about Evie's age, come to think of it. It's impossible. This is an alien. Does it? Well, I'm alien? No, no, no. I think this kid was an American. You're... This will make me rich. I'm going to write up Evie's case for the New England Medical Journal. Now, you stay right here. I'm going to go check this out, make special arrangements for a room at the hospital. Though, this is going to put my name on the medical map. Ha <laughs> ha! Case of blue dots? Is it contagious? Well, how do I know, Bino? What do you say about a disease that comes in decorator colors? Can I come rest down there? I'm lonely. Oh, oh all right, honey. Oh, Eve, bring your father. I want to ask him something. Okay. I'm gonna do the trim in here, okay? No, no, Phil, the blue trim goes outside. I know. Then why do you want to do the blue trim inside? The light's better in here. Phil, 
Okay, but don't blame me for what happens. Blue is a tough color to see in the dark. Hey, how you doing, kid? A little better. I got some sleep. Good. Honey, lie down. Eve, call your father. I want to ask him about this other case of blue dots. Okay. Dad? Hi, darling. How are you feeling? A little better. Dad, the doctor who was here happened to see my blue dots. <laughs> I bet that freaked him out, huh? <laughs> sort of. He said he read about a case of exactly the same thing. It was a child who was about my age. Oh, I was afraid of that. What? Afraid of what, Dad? <laughs> Listen carefully, honey. When I crashed on Earth many years ago, it wasn't because my ship malfunctioned. It was because I was shot down by Krangle the Skull Basher. He never told me that. I never told your mother that. Probably didn't want me to worry. I didn't want her to worry. Who's Krangle the Skull Basher? Kind of like Darth Vader, only nastier. He's an enemy. He wanted to prevent me from getting help from the other galaxy and followed me from the Triad planets. But you got away. Yeah, I got away, but I never knew what happened to him. He may still be on Earth, and just as I found your mother, Krangle may also have found someone to love. Where? In a motorcycle gang? <laughs> the child with the blue dots is probably Krangle's. Evie, no one must know about your blue dots. Otherwise, Krangle will know I have a daughter on Earth. Wonderful. <laughs> Please be careful, sweetheart. Take care. Oh, Eve, honey, don't worry about it. I'm sure everything will be fine. I know. All we have to do is keep my blue dots a secret. Right. I'll get it. Hello? Uh, doctor, no. No, don't do that. Doctor. Dr. Stockman. He's on his way over here with an ambulance to take Evie to the hospital. <laughs> So much for our secret. I got it! I can get cured before they get here. Honey, that won't be for two days. He called an ambulance, not a stagecoach. It's a snap. I'll stop time except for you, Mom, and me. We'll wait it out for two days until my blue dots to disappear. And then I'll unfreeze time. Eve. I cannot allow you to stop an entire planet for merely a case of measles. <laughs> On the other hand, go for it. I guess it's the three of us against the world. Yeah. Well, let's uh, settle in, watch some TV, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we can't. With time frozen, there's no television. Can you imagine Wheel of Fortune? <laughs> Vanna White stuck turning the letter F. No TV. Well, what are we gonna do for entertainment? Hey, we can entertain ourselves. Sure, we, we can sing songs, we can write letters, we can read poetry, we can do crossword puzzles, we, 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 can, we can crochet, we can converse. Do you remember conversation? Yeah. Like I said, what are we gonna do for entertainment? Mom's right, we've got each other. Yeah, and there's plenty of food. I've got practically a whole turkey in the refrigerator. Now that's entertainment. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, boardwalk, bingo! <laughs> and with a hotel and a house, that means you owe me $2,400 pay. I don't have it. Then I'll have to foreclose on your property and send you to jail, little miss. <laughs> Isn't this fun, honey? Uh... No, Uncle Bino won all my money. Movie. Forward.
words. Total, Total concept. concept. <laughs> Death Race 2000. E. Total concept. Wait. Behind. Thumb. Thumb behind. The hitchhiker. <laughs> Forward. Point ahead. Driving ahead. My mother, the car. Smokey and the bandits parts one, two, and three. I bet. <laughs> Good clue. Back to the future. It was a good clue, Bino. We just couldn't get it. This is boring. Well, at least it passed some time. And we played games, read poetry, sang songs, poured our guts out to each other, <laughs> played charades. Must have killed a lot of time. In about an hour and a half. How do you know? That's how long it takes me to eat a turkey. <laughs> so, Mom, what do we do now? Well, I thought that we, we could You know, go. this might be just the time for a man's input. <laughs> how about a little poker? I don't know how to play poker. Yeah, we didn't know how to play charades either, but we played it. <laughs> You'll learn. OK, seven card and a conif. Seven cards down, you hold four, pass three to the right, play your best five cards. Hi, love. Boy, she learns fast. Hey, you guys. This is boring. I'll see your jacks. I'll raise your... Huh? Oh, what time is it? No, uh, you've been asleep. Couple hours. Yeah, no wonder I'm hungry. <laughs> Eve, <sighs> take off your visor. What's wrong? They're gone. The blue dots are gone. Well, it hasn't been two days yet. Oh, I don't care. The evidence is gone, and now we don't have to worry about this Krangle coming over to bash in our skulls. <laughs> okay, I'll increase time. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Everything's back to normal. Yeah. Uh-huh. Here comes Dr. Stockman with the ambulance. Okay, now, Evie, what are you going to say when he asks you about the blue dots? What blue dots? That's my girl. <laughs> ah, Dr. Stockman, come on in. Thank you. How's Evie? What blue dots? What, yeah. <laughs> She's so much better. Oh, good. I, I have found that article in the journal about that other blue dot case. It's wonderful. There's no cure. Dots? What are you talking about, doctor? The blue dots on Evie's face. Oh, there she is. My little ticket to fame. Evie, where, where are the blue dots that were all over your face? Evie, now. Oh, what blue dots? On your face. I know I saw blue dots. I saw blue dots. Yeah, well, maybe you ought to get your eyes checked, Doc. <laughs> you don't understand. You see, if there are no blue dots, there goes my chance for fame and recognition. My, 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 my spot on the Carson show, it's all gone. Oh, I'm so sorry, Doctor. Well, maybe another terrible disease will come along and cheer you right up. The good ones are taken. <laughs> well, at least there's Mrs. Whitman. She thinks she has bubonic plague. Uh, doctor, hmm? what were you saying uh, about that case in the journal, Blue Dots? Yeah, uh, somewhere in Wyoming, a young boy named uh, Brian Krangle. I know I saw Blue Dots. <laughs> what? Those? Oh, thank heavens, it's contagious. Well, I do tend to grow on people. <laughs> oh, these Blue Dots, they're a mystery. Nah, just high gloss enamel. Come with me, we'll find a cure. I'll make you rich and famous. Famous? Well, I get to meet Robin Leach and Oprah Winfrey. Oh, I don't know what's going on. No? You know, I never thought I would say this, but thank God for Phil. Yeah, well, we did it. Yeah, our secret is still safe. It was a close call. Mm. Yeah, but think. Somewhere in Wyoming, there may be one of Troy's enemies. With a half alien son my age. Yeah. Kind of frightening thought, isn't it? Yeah. I wonder if he's cute. <laughs> Hi, 
seem a little tired. I am. I feel like I have orangutan arms. Well, we had a deal, you know, you bag it, you drag it. Well, next time, pack for a weekend and not a summer vacation. Well, I better go upstairs and get unpacked. How are you going to get that up without a forklift? <laughs> As Confucius say, mother who helps daughter lives prosperous life. Oh? Or not. Don't forget you promised to call dad when we get home. I will. Bill, Bill, junk mail, occupant, Bill. You may already have won a million dollars. Great. Now Ed McMahon can pay my bills. <laughs> Mom, Mom. What? What's wrong? Somebody stole Dad. What? I went upstairs to call him and the cube is gone. Well, Evie, now calm down, think. Where did you put Dad last? He was in my room, right where he always is. Are you sure? Come on, Mom, I wouldn't misplace my own dad. Well, nothing seems like it's been stolen. We don't, we weren't robbed. I hope he wasn't cube-napped. We do an awful thing like that. Cube-nappers? The police will be able to help us, won't they, Mom? No, 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 no police. Why not? Well, Evie, what am I supposed to tell them? My husband is missing? Well, officer, he lives in a little cube on my daughter's night table. Uh-oh. Uh-oh? I don't like that, Eve. That sounds like a 10 on the uh oh -ometer. I'm 11. I already called 911. Oh, Eve, that rings in the mayor's place. You know what a snoop he is. I'm sorry, but I had to do something. I know, of course you did. OK, sit down now. Now we'll, we'll put our minds together, and I'm sure we'll figure out where he is now. Do you remember the last time you saw, Dad, what you were doing? You remember, don't you? It was just before we left for San Francisco. I was packing, and I was just about finished. I decided to discard a few non-essentials. So I took this huge non-essential and put it on my desk. All of a sudden, my ear began to itch, so I scratched it, and it got skinny. Your ear? No, my dictionary. You were going to take a dictionary to San Francisco? It's my flashback. I can pack what I want. 
So then I tried the same thing with Bubba. It was incredible. Suddenly, Bubba became the world's first anorexic teddy bear. <laughs> Evie, hurry up. We're going to miss the plane. Well, you are the most incompetent painter in the state of California. Oh, yeah. Well, my other customers don't think that. He's right. They think he's the most incompetent painter in the entire Western Hemisphere. See? <laughs> Bill, is that yellow paint, or have you been swimming in egg yolks? Oh, this is yellow paint. Egg yolks have too much cholesterol. Uh, well, Donna, we better go. You're gonna miss that plane. Oh, Phil, here is the key. Please remember to lock up the house before you go. Okay, but if I if I lock it up before I go, I'll be stuck inside. <laughs> They're right. The entire Western Hemisphere. Thank you. Not at all. You won't believe what happened just now. The cube opened and all of a sudden, Bubba Bear went from fat to skinny. Skinny? You mean like uh, all of a sudden? That's amazing. I haven't seen this much weight loss since Olga the bus driver got her tummy tuck. <laughs> this is chubby Bubba. It was incredible. And it happened to the dictionary too. Each time the cube opened, it sent a flash. Well, you know the rest. I told you and Uncle Bino on the way to the airport. Well, it's an interesting story, but I can't tell that to the police. Alien Cube shrinks bear, then disappears. Inquiring minds want to know. And what do we tell them? Free! <laughs>
we were going off to the airport, uh, I was giving Phil some last-minute instructions. Hold on, now. Who is Phil? Well, he's... Well, he's a perfect suspect. A drifter who passes himself off as a handyman and, and preys on innocent women who live alone. You know, this... This would make a great movie of the week. I could play you. I'd like that, buddy. I'd like that a lot. Of course, you'd have to play it a little younger. Wait, Phil wouldn't steal anything. No, he's not a crook. No, nah, neither was Nixon, but look what happened there. All right, this Phil person. Let's get him in here and give him the fourth degree. Isn't that the third degree? Not when I get through with him. <laughs> I didn't do anything, I tell you. I'm innocent. I was at the movies. Yeah, that's where I was. It was a double feature. I sat through the whole thing twice. I was there for the entire duration. Look, you're not gonna pin this bum rap on me, I swear! I didn't do anything! They gotta believe me! Phil, Please! Phil, I Phil. Said... Huh? He only asked you your name. <laughs> oh. Oh. Well, in that case, my card. <laughs> Phil Pedrosian, painting and crochet. Give me your walls and your doilies. <laughs> All right, Phil, just what do you remember? I remember my third birthday party. I remember the Alamo. I remember the Floss Daily. Phil! Well, I even... Phil! I think he means when we left for San Francisco. I'll handle this, miss. I mean about when they left for San Francisco. Now start talking. Oh, come on. How am I supposed to grill anyone with a 40-watt bulb? Look, I got nothing to hide. I'll tell you whatever you want to know. That's more like it. Now, you were entrusted to secure this premises, did you? No. But I locked everything up. How can you be so sure? Is, is that one of those trick questions? Ah, you've been through this before. All right, what else do you remember? I remember when the, when the Dodgers played in Brooklyn. I remember Wax Lips. I remember Tiny Tim. I remember Gary Puckett. I remember... Yeah. What do you mean about the day in question? I was working in the kitchen. I was on one of those little rolly things with the wheels on them. to whistle like that while you work? Oh, no, that's OK. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I thought you were supposed to be painting anyway. Uh, I was, but I, I spilled some paint on the garbage disposal. What? Oh, well, clean it tomorrow. I've got to lock up and get Don and Evie to the airport. I got to get it out before it gets hard. Don't be stupid, Phil. All you have to do is rinse it through the disposal while it's still liquid. Ah, turn it off! Go! Turn it off! Turn it off! Ah! Pino! The, the most amazing thing I ever saw! What? Yellow garbage! <laughs> and that's pretty much it. They left, I finished up, locked myself out, and walked home. So, you just walked out of here that evening and didn't see anything unusual. Come to think of it, I did. When I got home and changed my clothes, I noticed that I put on two different colored socks that morning. <laughs> All right, you can go. Just don't leave town till this case is settled. Man pours paint down a sink, can't match his socks. <laughs> I don't think he can find his way out of town. I guess you're right, buddy. Thanks for putting in a good word for me. <laughs> now, <laughs> who else has access to these premises? Nobody. You confirm that? No, I mean, yes. I mean, nobody else can get in here. Wait a second. What about Bino? Wait a minute. Just. Who or what's a Beano? My uncle, and he wouldn't steal my jewelry box. No, and Christina Crawford's mother wouldn't whip her with a wire hanger. <laughs> this is outrageous. I will not have my own brother treated like a criminal. Look, if Phil didn't do it, and you didn't do it, and the chiclet didn't do it, that leaves only one person who could have done it. The butler? Your brother. Right now, he's a prime suspect. Get him over here. That does it. I'm issuing an APB. 
I only called him five minutes ago. And he only lives next door. He was in the shower. Likely story. I'll go over and hurry him up. Hang tight. You know, the detectives on TV are a lot nicer when they're asking people questions. Yeah, well, the detectives on TV are all wussies. Uh, somebody wanted to talk to me? No! no! <laughs> it's my brother. Oh, yeah? Then why is he hiding in there? I wasn't hiding. I just thought I'd fix up a little snack. Oh, well, that's very kind of you. Only a good cop never eats while on duty. He's gone! <laughs> Don't shoot! It's only the mayor! You were right, Milton. The scoundrel skipped town. I want to call Highway Patrol and tell him to keep an eye out for a sneaky, beady-eyed criminal type. <laughs> oh. Hiya, Bino. How's it going? All right, now, just what do you remember about the evening Mrs. McMahon and her daughter left for San Francisco? And I want to know everything. Okay. Uh, well, we had to have an early lunch so they could make the plane on time. So we had uh, lamb chops and um, mashed potatoes, lima beans. Uh, no, actually, they were peas. So then I thought a late snack might be good, so I made some diet hot chocolate, <laughs> cut a sliver of cheesecake with just a dab of ice cream. Oh, this guy didn't have time to do anything wrong. He never quit eating. <laughs> all right. We're gonna run all this down to the lab and start coming up with some answers. Good thinking. What lab? <laughs> Ladies, this case is as good as solved. Milton Weiler is now putting his brain into overdrive. Well, that'll sure be a welcome change from reverse. <laughs> Hostile. I like that in a woman. <laughs> I'm so glad he's gone. Me too. I'm hungry. Uncle Bino, is it okay if we have whatever you're making? Well, I wasn't really making anything, Evie. I just said that so I wouldn't have to come in there and talk to that detective. Why? Well, I have a confession to make. See, I didn't really exactly tell that guy the whole truth. So you left out the garlic bread on the dinner. Nobody cares, Bino. No, I left out a lot more. See, after I left the airport, instead of going straight home, I, I came back here. And then I went upstairs and went into Evie's bedroom. And... Amazing. It is thinner. <laughs> uh oh, Troy. You who, Troy? I know you're in there. <laughs> oh, come on, Troy. You're not still mad about that tape recorder in your honeymoon suite, are you? It was just... I never... Hey, Dad, open up. It's me, Evie, okay? <laughs> no, huh? Okay. Well, look, Troy, I just wanted to talk to you about that new little trick you showed Evie. You know, the one that makes things uh, thinner. So... How about just opening up and let's chat, huh? <laughs> hmm. Probably just stuck. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> oh. Okay. What happened? You want to know what happened? You want to know what happened? <laughs> you want to know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. Your dad bit me. No wonder. That's breaking and entering. Oh, I've tried everything but dynamite to get this thing off my hand. Hey, watch it. That thing is my husband. Oh, look, everybody, I'm sorry. I just wanted to be like every other overweight American and lose 50 pounds in five seconds. Is that asking too much? Oh, Bino, you ain't heavy. You're my brother. <laughs> Evie, call your dad so Uncle Bino can get his fist out of the cube. Yeah. Okay. Dad? Dad? Can you hear me? Oh, thank heavens. Hey, it's all pruny. Well, you leave your hand out in space a few days. You've got to expect that. Hi, Evie. What's up? Hi, Dad. 
Uncle Bino accidentally got his hand stuck in the cube. Oh, must you blab it to the entire galaxy? What was he doing with his hand in the cube? Well, he wanted to get thinner, like I accidentally did with Bubba Bear. Evie, that power isn't really designed to make things thinner. That's just the first step of the process. What does the second step do? It's kind of a cross between vaporization and charbroiling. That could have been me. That could have been Bino, which could have been an improvement. The power can be used for good, for evil, or for deep frying. Or not at all. Or not at all. I get the picture, Dad. Well, I gotta go, honey. Listen, give your mom a big Antarian kiss for me. I will. What do you say we all go out to eat? Hmm? Come on, Bino. That, that could have been me. It's like he's in a trance or something. Bino? Bino, dinner. Oh, great, I'll make the salad. <laughs> Works every time. Wilder, Marlo Weiss! Don't shoot! I'm coming! <laughs> Just thought I'd come by and give you an instant update on the investigation. Oh. Yeah, wouldn't you know the funniest thing? We found the jewelry box. All right, I told you I'd solve this case. Yeah. Where was it? <laughs> oh, dopey me. I left it at the cleaners. <laughs> Ditsy. I hate that in a woman. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. Mwah. Love you. Okay, so I'll see you later, huh? I'll give you a call.